Alright, how's it going y'all? Today we're going to be going over how to set up a Unify controller on a Synology NAS using Docker. So a Unify controller is what allows you to control your different Unify devices, your Wi-Fi access points, your switches, and things like that. And if you wanted to just buy one from Unify, you have to buy the Cloud Key Gen 2 now, which is like $200. But if you only need to control your Unify gear and you don't need to record video to it, there's no reason to pay that much, especially because it's not that complicated. You could install one on a Raspberry Pi, or if you've got a Synology lying around, you just install it there. And so we're gonna be going over how to deploy a Docker container for the Unify controller on a Synology NAS. And so this way, whenever you've got all your devices, you can just simply connect them on there, and then everything's very simple. So first go ahead and you just need to make sure your NAS has Docker, has the capability to run Docker. So for that, the easiest way to find out is you just go in the package center and look for Docker. Right now, I'm actually running DSM 7.2 beta. And so in the future, when you're running DSM 7.2, you're actually gonna be looking for container manager. And I'm running DSM 7.2 beta because, well, it's gonna come out fairly soon. And the steps are going to be pretty much identical between the two devices. It's just going to be different where the windows are, but it's gonna be really easy to go in between them. And then after it's live, so if you've got Container Manager in your Package Center or Docker in your Package Center, that means your NAS runs Docker, or you can always just Google it and figure out your model. All right, so now just go ahead and install Docker or Container Manager, whichever one you're currently on. And these steps are pretty much gonna be identical between the two of them. And we just need to go ahead and open her on up and go into our registry and just search for Unify. And you're gonna to wanna to select this guy right here, this Linux Server Unify Controller and we're just gonna hit download on it and we will pull the latest. And while that's pulling over here, I have the Linux server docs right here. I will make sure to leave a link to this in the description below. And it pretty much goes over everything you need to run in here. And scrolling down, the pretty much the important stuff that we actually need is all listed out in the ports because that's really all that matters is basically the ports and then also where we dump the data. So we're going to need 443, Stun, optional. 101, optional, but it's for access point discovery, so you're almost gonna certainly want that. 8080, has to have that. 1900, does not work because we're because of Docker, we're on layer three, so it will fail if you try to use that port. Then these two ports are used if you have a guest Wi-Fi access point, and it wants to have that portal, you know the one you see at coffee shops where you have to click through and say, yes, I agree, and then it gives you internet. That is 8843 or 8880. So you only need those if you're running that. Most people probably will not. And then if you've got the throughput test using Wi-Fi man, 6789. And then if you're doing remote syslog, which you probably are not, 5514. And so really all we're gonna do is a couple of these because you just don't need it. And then the other important piece is this volume mapping, the environmental variable. So this really tells us everything we need to know about how to set this up. All right, so now it's gone ahead and downloaded and somehow it already has an update available, probably just a bug in DSM 7.2. And we're gonna select run. If you're on Docker from DSM 7.1 or before, this is going to be deploy. And we're just gonna take the image and call it unify. You can enable your resource limitations, you probably don't need to, and almost certainly enable auto restart. And here it's pulled over those ports. We may as well just give them all the default. And then there's the few extra ones. I'm just gonna copy and paste these on over. And then if we remember, the important ones that are not there are gonna be the stun, which is not really required, but we do wanna do one zero 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 one, both being UDP. And then just for fun, we'll add the mobile throughput test as well. And by the way, any of the ones over here that say UDP or UDP, and if they don't say it, they're TCP. Next step is a very important, your volume setting. So this will work without it, but then all your configs will get lost as soon as you do an update or anything. So it's really important to remember it. You wanna go ahead and create a new folder in here called Unify, you put it in the Docker container, and we're going to do slash config. And that is where it's going to be mapped. And those are all the environmental variables you need. That's it, you wanna be on a bridge network, and really that's all we gotta do. So now we can just go ahead and deploy the thing. So now if we go over to the container, we will see it is going to be deploying. 
and we're going to see a CPU spike as it starts off running and it's got to do all the initializations and compile and everything like that. So we can just look through the log here and just kind of wait it out. And now we're going to wait a little while. It might not have even be done yet. I don't think I got the log. Everything is done. But we'll just go ahead and open a new tab. And you're going to want to go to the IP address of your NAS and port 8443. So I'm going to go HTTPS because it's HTTPS and DS923.local, which is my local host name. You could also replace DS923 with your own host name of the NAS or the local IP address of the NAS, however you've got it set up for you. We're going to go 8443. And it's going to have a non-secure certificate. Don't worry about that. And we're going to view it. And if you get this 404 not found, that's because the init's not done yet. So we can just wait her out and we can see, yep, it's still, it's still going through and setting everything up and all that good stuff. So we, we just need to wait until it comes in here and it will say init done. You just come over here and hit refresh and eventually it will get in. All right. So now we have gotten through. And now we can name it. We'll call it the application name. SpaceX demo. Agree to the EULA. And now what we're going to do is we can either sign in with our Unify account or set it up locally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to untick both these. So that way we can only set this up locally, which is an option. Just go in, set up your username, password, all that good stuff. Or you can also just sign in with your own Unify account. Totally up to you. And definitely enable auto backups. And right now it has not found any devices yet, but we'll go ahead and hit next. Skip the Wi-Fi. You can do that obviously if you want to. And basically do our simple setup. All right, so now we are in the controller. The next thing we're going to need to do because we are hosting this locally and we're not a DNS server, is we need to tell everybody how to connect to this. So there's gonna be two different ways to do this. The best one is going to be to make sure your Synology NAS has a static IP address on the network. So the easiest way to do this is come in here, control panel, network, network interface, and then set up a DHCP reservation in your router for this IP address to give it to the Synology. The other option would be to statically assign it here and make sure it's reserved. But however you need to do it, make sure that no other devices on the network get this IP address and that this Synology always has that IP address. So I'm going to copy this IP address right here. And now we're going to come in and we're going to tell all of our unified devices, hey, the controller is at that IP address. So we're going to go in settings, system, advanced. And we are going to find inform host. We're going to override our inform host to be that IP address. The other option you could have is you could also set up a DNS redirect, but for simpler setups, just use the IP address and then make sure that you have that. And before you change IP address or anything, you're going to need to change this. So everybody knows to update to the new one. And that's it. Now we can hit apply changes. All right. And so now that that's done, we can just go back in and we should see any of our unified devices. Anything here that's not been adopted should get automatically found. And now you just click to adopt. So this will essentially happen is our controller right here is going to reach out to the device right here and say, hey, I want to adopt you. I am at 10.30.0.0. 0 0.106, whatever we set up in this set and form down here, we'll be told, hey, whenever you connect to me, start connecting to this guy right here. And that way it will automatically connect. Now, if our Synology NAS changes from 106 to any other IP addresses, everything's just gonna get lost. So you wanna make sure this is something you've got control over. And if you're hosting your own domain, you already have your own domain name, you could say like unify.spacerex.co for example, and have it point to this IP address and then type that in here. And that way, if you ever needed to update it, you could just update it without having to redo everything. But now that device probably should have adopted. Well, it's got to update first. You know what, while that's adopting, let's also go into settings over here and update our backup schedule. So right now it's set up for monthly. That to me is not nearly enough. 
we're going to do this weekly at the minimum. Go on Mondays or something. That way it's a lot faster and happens a lot more often. And then since you're hosting it yourself, give yourself 30 backup files. So like 30 weeks, and that should be good for everybody. If you're doing a lot of stuff, you can do it more often, but definitely turn that up. I don't know why monthly is the option. We'll also just go in here right now and download a backup. Show you how that works. And then if we go into our Docker folder under file station, Docker, unify, data, backup, this right here is where those backups will live. And so you can snapshot this folder and have access to those backups. Even if your unified controller gets completely corrupted, the backups are right here, which is really nice to have. All right, now, hopefully by the time I go back over here, uh, it's still getting ready. Just taking its sweet time, isn't it? It will connect on in. Tends to be about now where you question, did I do this right? Has it adopted properly? But yeah, sometimes it just takes a long time to adopt for some reason. Voila, we are in. We can set everything on up. You can see who is connected and everything like that and manage your VLANs all directly from here. It is really easy to set up and pretty robust. I'm gonna do a video on the future about how to manage remote devices because I do that for a fair amount of clients, but that's out of the scope of this video. It is really easy to set up and you'll just find everything on your local network. And if you can't, you can use the set inform command. It's pretty easy to Google that. You just SSH in, tell the IP address of the Unified Controller. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go and leave any of the tutorials you like to be make in the comments below and check out the forums. They're awesome. Also, if you wanna hire me to do this for your company or anything like that, there's a link for that in the description. All right, have a good one. Bye.